about our kitchen in five major tasks like meal prep or food prep, food storage, cooking and baking, specialty, and then cleaning products. Five sort of tasks that we do in the kitchen and thinking about that as, as zones can help us think through and simplify our kitchens. I'm glad you're here. My name is Erica Lucas and I share videos about slow and simple living. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through my cooking and baking zone, number three, of our kitchen, including the tools that go along with that task, like pots, pans, organization, trays, utensils, and more. Zone four will also be in this video, that's specialty. Zones one and two, meal and food prep and food storage, I covered in a previous video, part one. I'll link that below in the description box and in an iCard above. Zone five will be published next, and that is going to be a clean with me, and I'll show you all my cleaning products organization and where I keep it all. This pan, this is a new pan for us. It's a heavy duty um, ceramic cast iron and uh, casserole pan, I love it. And it doesn't fit in my pots and pans cabinet. I have one cabinet dedicated to pots and pans. This pan is what made me think of making <laughs> parts three and four because this right here is my pots and pans right next to the stove. But it doesn't, it doesn't fit without blocking easy access to something else. The way our pots and pans cabinet is designed is so that you could just reach in even with one hand if you had to and get something out or put something away very easily. I do not like having to move things or take things out in order to reach things in the back of the cabinet. That extra step for me is just more than I want to do in my kitchen. So this pan has been stored over here. Here's the problem. I forget that I have it because it's not in my pots and pans. That might sound really kind of trivial or elementary, but with the way my brain thinks, if I don't see it, I forget I have it. That's why uh, toy rotation has never worked as an organ organization system for me because if I don't see it, I forget I have it. And I wanna be able to open my pots and pans cabinet and decide which pan is the best for what I'm doing in the kitchen. And I want that casserole dish, that casserole pan in my pots and pans cabinet, which means I need to make changes in there. My first thought is what could I get rid of to make space for the new pan? The answer right now at this time is nothing. My husband loves this pan. These are our everyday pots and pans, the caraway set. These are mag magnetic dividers that it came with. This is our Dutch oven and then our, I gotta go this way, and then our big pot for like lasagna and pasta and uh, big soups that I make when I make double batch soups. So all of these have a purpose and a use and they get used often enough on a monthly basis that this is where I want them to be. So I need to redo this cabinet. So to make space for that casserole dish, I think I need to stack these things in some way, like some sort of a pan stacker, and then figure out a better way to put the pots. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna give that a shot, and then hopefully I'll have enough, I'll, I'll find a way to do it. Put this on top. That's kind of okay, except that I don't like to have to take something out to use something, although that does lift out pretty easily. And I use this, use this really often. And then if I put the casserole dish here, I'm still playing with the problem of having to take out the casserole dish every time I want to use that. And I don't use that casserole dish as often as I use these, these other things in the back. Mm. I can't see a workaround where I don't have something here in the front. That will annoy me because then I have to take that out to use any of those back pants. I don't love it better, but what it does do is compartmentalize by shelf by most often used and least often used. Um, yeah, these are my go-to four pans for everyday cooking. These are special 
recipes that go with it and then that's my husband's choice to keep that one uh but this is a this will work for me a little while i left the extra magnetic shelf right there it'll work for now i have to use it for a few recipes to really test out its effectiveness and whether or not this new system works but it does meet my requirement of not needing to take something out to get something else so for now it works Okay, so now that that's kind of squared away a little bit better in my brain, let me show you cooking and baking. So that for me is the oven, the stovetop, and the microwave, and the utensils and things that go along with that. So for meal prep, zone one, I do that here. Zone two is food storage, which I have some materials here that help me uh, prep fruit when it gets home and meat. And then food storage is also fridge freezer and pantry behind me. So zone three right here and in zone one, I've moved everything closer. So the utensils here, pot holders are always here. And uh, so that's all here next to the stove now. Pots and pans right down here. This here, spice drawer. Also right next to the oven. A lot of times we just spice the food as we go, or if I'm doing it as part of meal prep, it's also just right here. So when I'm standing here cooking dinner, I'm ready to plate it and serve it. That's right down here behind me. I have one pull-out shelf that has our serving dishes here, two plates and two bowls. One of them's in the dishwasher. And then this is also used for serving as lot, and it's also oven safe if I need to bake in it. This I don't use, but it was my mother's so it's, you know, it's been a part of my entire life, but it's, it has a, lead, a high lead count because of the paint, the vintage Pyrex. I don't use it, it's still taking up space. I just don't know what to do with it. I don't like this drawer underneath the oven. It's just difficult to open and use and stuff tends to fall inside of it. I just have the lids for the pots and pans down here right now. And then I just wash them before I need them because we don't use them very often. And it just gets kind of yucky down there. So I don't like it. And it's hard to close. I have to close it with my foot. In this large deep cabinet with a pull out drawer, that's where our baking pans are. There's not a really great place near the stove to put the baking pans. My mom used to keep them in the oven. That's just a habit for me that I forget about and I preheat the oven and then I got a bunch of hot pans in there. So I don't store it in there. The cabinet next to the stove maybe could change up, but it's our appliance cabinet. And all of these appliances get used right here. So it just makes a lot of sense for those to be there. I could use them over here, but we don't. We just, it's not, a, it's not our process. Also, this is like the dirty dish area. So that's not really gonna work. If I take a step back, for now, the baking trays are here, kind of farther away from what I think of as zone three, cooking and baking. I'm just gonna call this specialty because these are all appliances that may or may not get used on a weekly basis. Most of these do. I mean, the only thing maybe is the juicer gets less often used. Everything else gets pulled out of here nearly once or twice or more a week. The toaster comes out here every day. So this is a specialty cabinet for me and I keep our cutting boards here because it's close to where I do all of the cutting and meal prep. This is also a zone for cabinet of specialty. I have all my metal pans and Pyrex storage in here. And then some KitchenAid parts down the bottom that I don't use. Miscellaneous tools. And then this is just the drawer for water bottles and then paper products that you use in foil in the kitchen. My last specialty section is this cabinet. I really, I mean, I maybe open this cabinet once a month. Uh, the blender, the big blender, the hand mixer and then the immersion blender, all special recipe stuff that I don't use very often. And then the kids extra lunch bag stuff gets stored in here too. That's my zones three and four. If I could make a change, I would love to have those um, cookie trays closer to the oven. It's not a big deal, the kitchen's not that big. So it's just three steps to get what I need. Storage wise and convenience wise, it would be simpler to be closer to where they get used, the oven. 
I would love any comments you have about that vintage Pyrex and what you think I could do with it. Of course I could donate it, right? I just don't want someone to use it because it's it's so high in lead. According to, um, what is it, leadmama.com? I looked up that pattern. High lead count because of the paint they used back then. Uh, so I just don't want someone else to use it, serve it to their family. <laughs> I know a lot of people collect vintage Pyrex. I don't. Uh, so I would like I would like to do something practical with it and direct, like give it to someone who collects those things. Uh, I could probably post in a buy nothing group and ask if there are any vintage Pyrex collectors that would like it. It's also a little bit of a sentimental declutter, not a little bit. It's a big sentimental declutter for me and I'm not quite ready for it. So it sits in my kitchen to remind me that I want to declutter it. It sits in my kitchen to remind me that memories are not held in vintage Pyrex. Memories are held in my heart and in my head. I'm still not ready to let go of it. Okay, uh, so the next video in this uh, series will be a clean with me and I'll show you my cleaning products under the sink and how I do it and what I use. And so I will link zones one and two here, zone five cleaning stuff here when it's ready. Thank you for sharing part of your day with me and I hope you have a great day. See you in the next video.